Le was a puppy of two dogs that live at a Chinese wooden door makers at the corner of our street. He's always lived around their workshop but never actually in it, by choice perhaps. So he's a semi-street dog as they feed it and it sleeps under their vans during the hottest part of the day. We were concerned about him as we'd found him today standing in the water looking all around his street corner as he usually does when the pavements are dry. Several other dogs we'd not seen before too. A concerned local came by with some food for Lua and he skipped up the steps of a road bridge to eat it. The floods have only been in our area for a week now but it's hard to believe the roads were any different from the canals they are today. Lua's scabby skin was in a bad way before the floods on closer inspection it's quite a bit better. The water seems to have at least done him some good murky as it is. Pegasame normally has eight lanes of traffic, four lanes on each side with a grassy divider. It's a road which is impossible to cross without risking life and limb. Today it's a giant canal, passable only by large trucks and boats. This new mixture of transport seems to present to me its own dangers being the often unpredictable nature of the improvised floating devices so extra care must be taken to keep out of the way of those big wave making wheels. Almost every wheeled vehicle on Pegasame Road today seems to have just one purpose in being there. To stop and let people climb on board when they signal and drop them off similarly. No money ever changes hands. A large part of the population of Bangkok are coming and going to work each day in this way. Pegasame is similar to many other districts of Bangkok that have seen similar flooding in recent weeks. Ties with trucks that can make it through the water are all here, driving up and down Pegasame all day and all night. The atmosphere on the streets is unanimously good-spirited, courteous and resilient being that the majority of Thais don't expect an easy life so are quite ready to adapt to any situation that comes their way with good spirits and a smile never far away. Big C supermarket Pegasame is a lifeline for many residents like us braving it out. Customers arrive by any means they can. Not having a boat is not a deterrent. Big C customers get their shopping home in a variety of ways from pulling along giant lorry inner tubes to small floating plastic boxes which help Heavy bags glide weightlessly on the water. On magical desert island coconut palm beaches, children make sandcastles where grass once grew and protect them in their turn when lorries send waves that threaten to flood and destroy them. This lady is waiting reflectively with her bags of shopping in a cement bucket. Big C in recent weeks has become a much needed oasis of stability. After a long and often arduous trip to get here for many, the familiar sounds, smells and plentiful shelves offer the promise that we'll keep our heads above water no matter how long it stays in our streets and homes. The mere fact that the shelves are so well stocked is reassuring after an initial period of stressful panic buying. Amongst the normally stocked items now missing are soft drinks and water. There's not a bottle in sight and hasn't been for some time. That is, all but for a handful of the smallest seemingly overpriced bottles of Evian water at $2 each. 
the reason these luxury bottles of Evian water are still there is the government and police have set up help outposts with free meals and water and they also deliver them in boats to those that want them so the panic for water is all but over. This boy is trying his best to pull along his father in a cement tub. This Venetian style boat owner has a stylish blue hat to match his boat. This lady is getting a driving lesson being the lucky new owner of a jet ski by her husband. Residents in Mubarn Syndicate that didn't evacuate and most seem to have left are adapting or have adapted already to the flood. Some seem to welcome the change, strange to say. We took our shopping back home in our canoe past a fisherman catching with a long net stretched along our lane. Despite the discomfort and danger of the water all around us, it's still possible to see how nice it would be if Bangkok really was a city of boats instead of cars and lorries. However, the city was never planned to be that way and the water has displaced almost one million people and 500 have already lost their lives. Our five dogs are coping being confined to the balcony and they are adapting too. Adapting seems the key to survival.